Hi there, Linda Goodall here. In one of the Facebook groups I'm in, someone asked how to digitize a key fob in Hatch. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Key fobs are really easy. Key fobs and snap tabs are probably the easiest possible thing that you can make that's freestanding and just easy to digitize. And actually, a key fob was one of the first things I made when I was learning how to tool leather, so that kind of takes me back a ways. So to understand how to digitize a key fob, you need to understand how it's made. And if you've watched any of the, I don't know, hundreds of videos out there on how to stitch a key fob, you'll easily see the process. So let's go over that. Basically, there are two types. So this one on the left is the easiest. And the reason I say it's the easiest is it because it doesn't require any extra hardware or any snaps. This one's going to require snaps. Both of them are made in a similar process. You're going to hook your stabilizer. Usually tearaway works well. Then you're going to stitch a placement line. So you'll stitch a placement line. You'll lay down your fabric, which is vinyl, leather, could be felt, but if you use felt, you want to use a good quality wool felt so it holds up and doesn't get all shreddy. On this one, what I did was I stitched that placement line again. And that way it holds the fabric to the stabilizer. Then I stitch my decorative elements. This one's done a little bit differently. You'll notice it has this long tab out here. And this is going to get folded over. So this one gets folded over. There's a ring in the middle there. And this gets glued to that. On this one, this will just get folded over and there'll be a snap that will hold it shut. So this one could have an exposed back if you're not paying attention to what you're doing. So this one's done a little bit differently. You can see them sequenced over here. This one, I've stitched the placement line. Then I've done the decorative stitching. Then you're going to slide another piece of fabric. Could be the same fabric or something different underneath. And then you'll stitch that top uh, line again. I'm using a triple stitch or bean stitch or a, they call it a triple run here in Hatch. And that will hold the back to the front. So then you're going to take them out of the hoop, get rid of the stabilizer, and you're going to cut about an eighth of an inch all the way around. On this one you'll have to put the snap on. This one you'll glue them together. Hot glue, a really good hot glue will work well. So that's all there is to them. And you could you know, do multiples in a hoop. I wouldn't do a whole lot. This is a five by seven inch hoop, just to give you an idea how big they are. So they're easy to make. Now that we know how they're sewn, let's digitize one. So I have my screen set up here. I like a white background. This is a five by seven hoop. We're not gonna worry about zooming, zoom levels or anything, because it's not that big a deal for this. We're going to just use built-in stuff in Hatch. We don't need any artwork. You can get fancy with your your tabs, your snap tabs. You can make them big. They could be luggage tabs, uh, luggage tags. You can make them small. I don't like a big honking thing, so I'm going to make mine relatively small. And we want to start by using a letter because that little floral element. Let me show you that again. That little floral element is just an asterisk. So let's. Um, Go back to the other one. So I'm just going to use an asterisk, which is what I used on the other one. And I'll type in an asterisk. And I used Greek before. And that turned out really well. So I'm just going to use that again so we're not stumbling around picking fonts. And I'm going to set it to 30 millimeters. And that actually isn't 30 millimeters. That's a 30 millimeter font, but that doesn't make it 30 millimeters tall. So let me just change this up here. So you can always change the size here. And that, that looks a little bit better. And that's our starting point. Then we're going to use Create Outlines and Offsets. I'll tell you, this is the greatest little tool. We're going to do Uncheck object outlines. I found out that's what I was doing wrong. I had both of them checked. So I'm going to have it just do offset outlines. I'm going to offset them at two millimeters. 
and I'm going to do five of them so I can see which one I might like best. And just click OK. And there we have them. And um, hmm, I think I will go with the largest one because that will probably look the best. We'll delete those other ones. And there's that part. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to preserve this one and we'll copy it, create a new document, and paste it in there just as a holding pit sort of thing. And then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to do the foldover version first. So let's group that and I'll kind of move it down. And if I hold the control key and right click, you can see that I'm moving it up in a straight line. And see, if I move my mouse around, I can only move it up and down in that straight line. So that's a really good trick to know. Now I need to digitize the little bit that goes in there. So we'll slide down to digitize. We'll pick our rectangle tool. And um, this one doesn't have to be too wide. I've got my grid set at 10 millimeters, which is a little less than half an inch. I kind of like that size, so let's just use that and I'll just go out here and make my rectangle and select it and I want an outline. And then we'll move it in here. Now here's a little trick I learned this morning. Thank goodness for Facebook groups. It's so easy to get help. So I've selected all my pieces. I'm going to right click and then I'm going to choose a line in space. And I want to align centers vertically. So see how it shifted? Now it's all perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this little flower dude up there so that it makes it easy to select all, all three of these. Oh, you know what? I have them grouped, don't I? I have to ungroup. And now I'm going to do an outline on those. Edit objects. Create outlines. And we're going to do one with an offset of zero. And that's how we get that grouped thing there. And now I'm going to get rid of these. And there I have my tab unit thing. So this is going to do dual purpose. It's going to be my placement line, and it's also going to be my tack down, or my decorative stitching on the top. So let's move that to the back. So my placement line is just going to be a regular run stitch. I'm going to copy and paste that, move that back, and I'm going to make that a triple run. Also, I want to change these to fill. So let's go here, and the reason I'm doing that, it's pretty wide for satin, and this is going to be handled a lot. And satins can get raggy looking, they can snag on things, the tatami is just going to be a flatter stitch, and it's just going to hold up much better. That's pretty much done. I want to do some optimizing on the stitch order, but I already showed you that in another video, so we won't take time to do that. So let's move that one to the side and make the other one. Let's go back to my other design, copy, paste, it's already ungrouped, and we'll change that to tatami. And I need to put that long tab on there that's going to be my snap tab. So we'll go back to digitize, I'll find my rectangle. This one needs to be wider. The snaps I'm using are from Snap Source. Their number or their size 16, which is 7 sixteenths of an inch wide, just about a half an inch, or just a little over 11 millimeters. So I have a 10 millimeter grid here. So I'm going to make my tab, my rectangle, 15 millimeters wide. And I'm not going to be real precise about this. I'm just going to eyeball it. 
And that looks pretty good. And there it is. But I want a nice curve on the top. I don't want any squared off edges. Squared off edges kind of get mangled, being handled a lot. So I'm just going to select it. I'm going to click the reshape tool. I'm going to right click. And then I'm just going to drag that up and see how we get a nice rounded thingy up there. And then we will move that into place. Well, let's do our align again. So we have to drag it around the whole thing. Right click. Align in space. Vertical centers. And I can use the nudge keys to, which are the arrow keys. I'm just going to nudge that guy down until he's well within the flower because we have to do our outline trick again. And then we're going to edit objects, create outlines and offsets, keep the same thing as before. We'll do OK. Get rid of those two things. Delete. And now we have that one. We're going to copy, paste, make the second one a triple run, move this into place. And that's how you digitize some really quick snap tags. Now, let's say that you have a only have a 4x4 four four hoop. So one of the things people are doing, let's um, take this whole thing here and let's group it. And we'll go, we'll create a new document. And we'll set our hoop to 100 by 100. Paste. I guess I didn't get my flower, but you'll get the idea anyway. And what we want to do is just kind of do some angling here. And you see how it fits into the hoop right now? Now, I want to warn you about this. People do this to get standard embroidery designs into their 4x4 hoop. And this is a bad idea because if you're hooping on grain, you are sewing on the bias. And when we test designs, we test on grain. And you can get some bad results when, especially if you have fills with outlines. So that's not a good thing to do. Let's talk about a few more things. If you're using vinyl, there are kind of two kinds of vinyl. One has a backing on it and one does not. And the one that doesn't is going to act more like paper or metal or leather, meaning that when you embroider on it, your needle is going to punch a hole. When we work with woven fabrics, the idea of the needle is to separate the fibers and go between the fibers. But when you're working on metal or anything that's non-woven or non-knit, then you're going to be actually poking holes into that thing. And if we're using vinyl that way, we could actually end up with cut work <laughs> instead of embroidery, which is not what we want. So how do we do that? So what we need to do is we need to go to Customize, Design, and we're going to do Auto Fabric. And we're stitching on vinyl. I can tell you there's no vinyl in here, but there is leather. So we're going to choose leather. But before I do that, take a look down here at the stitch count. The stitch count is currently 6,603 stitches. And when we change it to leather or suede and click OK, it drops by almost 2,000 stitches or more. So that's going to lighten up the stitches in here so that we don't end up with cut work. And now you're ready to go and test sew it. Now if you're not sure if this is the size you want, here's a good tip. Print it out, cut it out, and try it. You know, you just fold it over and lay your snap on there, see if it looks good, do you need to make some adjustments, because it's real easy to make adjustments because you have all the outlines and you don't have to draw anything. So this is pretty easy. Another thing to know, yes, you're stitching on vinyl, which we said was like leather. Do not use a leather needle. Use the smallest needle that can penetrate the vinyl because you want the smallest possible hole. The smallest needle is going to give you the most accurate stitching anyway. So that's, that's another good thing to know. We learned a couple of things in here. We learned how to align things. We learned how to do a copy constrained drag. We learned about 
fabric settings. I'm just learning so many things in this software and it's only day three for me with this software. So I'm, I'm really impressed. So I hope this gives you some ideas of what you can do with your software that's quick and easy and fun to do. This would be fun to do with your kids to make these little things. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.